The Hebrew text in the Bible has hidden formats. By revealing these formats, I will prove the first writer's words were hidden from you. These formats look like poetry as I group them into small paragraphs. Their grouping will become known as a psalm, and together they become psalms. Let me show you our Creator's 12 commandments, listed in Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 17. Any father of a family or his wife who did not obey any one of these 12 commandments, our Creator demanded they bring him a sin offering. Thus, our Creator defined the word sin as not obeying any one of these 12 commandments. Next, I want to show you how I changed one word in Exodus 26, verse 26, the word bars to arches, and the words now reveal the style of the roof for our Creator's tent for meeting with Him. Let me show you the translator's words from the preface of the 1611 King James Bible. They gave four reasons for themselves or others to edit the Bible's words. The red arrow at the top points to their third reason to edit the text. By the light and feeling we attained unto ourselves. The next red arrow down points to them giving the title, The Divine, to a clerk named Gregory. The next block of words, they point out they were happy that the first emperor of Rome established the year to the course of the sun. Behind this text means Nebuchadnezzar ordered his kingdom to follow our creator's calendar when he stopped eating grass. Did you notice the letter S in sun is capitalized? This is to give respect to the Egyptian sun god Ra. Have you seen the Egyptian obelisk in the Vatican's front yard? The last arrow points to your reward for studying the Bible. Your reward is to have a fellowship with the saints and participation of a heavenly nature that will never fade away. There is no such thing as nature to a truthful Christian. Our Creator created everything. By their own words, they were not seeking to know our Creator or Jesus. Not everyone has the knowledge to correct every word. I have an old Bible program that has the New American Standard Bible 1977 concordance to help find a better word. Their concordance has the number of times they use that English word in a parenthesis for that Hebrew word. The translators removed his name, YHVH, to put in two titles, Lord and God. I replaced those titles using the letters Y and V as his name for the Hebrew language does not have a J, O, or W. By using these two letters, I am closer to the... All right, I'm going to start with showing uh, what I found in 14, chapter 14, and then I'll get on to 15, but this helps to you to be introduced to the formats that I'm finding or looking for. Um, for example, this is a three verse format where I have a period here and then I have a comma and then I have a period where these two state these two uh, verses when put together explain this as a statement and then this makes a small paragraph and then I find another one and it is so um, like the first one that these two become a larger uh, format. So uh, what you find is I haven't found the other one here for this one. So what I do have though, is I can show you the four verse format here. And that is that the text becomes um, one sentence or one verse to another verse, but it's actually like a complete sentence. And then it happens again and again, the format makes a small paragraph. And then I have another like paragraph. So these two become a large paragraph. Now that's, it's nice that it's cleaned up and it's easy to see, but it is how I uh, edit the text that is what I'm doing here to record for history. Because when I get done, all the books will be put together. Hey, X-Force, how you doing? Uh, yeah, been a while. But I've been sick a little bit, and then my dad was uh, been put into the hospital, and then uh, we just got him into recovery. 
in 95 you can fall and hurt yourself really bad from what I'm finding out so but glad to see you stop by and uh, I, I know you're all familiar with what I'm doing here so no big surprise if you need some question answered I'm here but I appreciate you stopping by now here, oh, I got to explain where, uh, uh, yes, sir, <laughs> thanks for the respect. Um, Isaiah is a prophet during these two kings here, although sometimes the text is trying to put him in this or this, with this king. So other times I've got text about this king way back here, which is like another 100 years earlier, or at least 80 years earlier than what uh, Isaiah is uh, saying here in the text. Now, um, I've got this green highlighted because I went through this and it doesn't sound like there's gonna be much text here. So this is gonna be a quick video. Uh, so what I want I get a chance here. I'm going to show you this program and this is uh, Where I can click on a word. This is 1977 NSAB and because I have this concordance uh, That uh, NSAB put out and it tells you how many times they used this word Okay now the problem with this is these guys have been killed off men women children and animals since moses uh took them east of the river jordan so that's why this text here when it has concerning moab many times um i have to say that this is not truthful or is this early text from that time so the other thing is is they wouldn't use the word oracle oracle is a pagan word for uh, how pagans say that this was uh, said by their God okay so right off the bat there's corruption of the text you would have the word vision concerning um, Moab it would be something like this for the format uh, oh I forgot to mention that uh, what I'm looking for in the format uh, let me bring it back up here for a second um, what I try to do is or what I have to do once you find these and you can try them out in the Psalms 1 through 8 at the very beginning and you'll find what you see by making them the shortest sentence you'll find whoops that um, uh, I have one or two major words with the least amount of small words that I can and then you see I'm repeating this throughout the whole time here so uh, that's how the formats are I'm looking for or how I, I start making these small verses uh, it would read like this it would be the vision concerning Moab, Moab but then you can see that I don't have a third verse so it's almost like they took the text and added this concerning Moab okay uh, surely in the night of Moab. I don't know who, I don't know if this is a city or um, a name, uh, a place. Yes, yeah, so this is going to be like a city. They don't even say it's a city, they say a place. So that's kind of odd that there's there's just this place. Uh, different time zones. Yeah, I'm here in uh, Florida, so um, so you're up early. <laughs> um, but other than that, you could be from Europe. So that's why I do try to uh, do this 11 o'clock or 10 o'clock type of uh, uh, streaming is to uh, have late searches from Europe to find out. 
In fact, I think it's, I've got this set up trying to do from like Saudi Arabia is like uh, maybe like 6.30 right now. Yeah, maybe 6.30, I'd have to look. But yeah, I've tried to do this so um, Europe is informed or that whole time zone. Um, and into Africa all the way. So I've had people from India stop by. Uh, so uh, there are a few people that do stop by from time to time from uh, places other than my time zone. And I have to look at this. My dad's in the hospital there. I got to look at the messages coming in here. I never know when I have to just leave. So, come on. Okay, they're there. And he looks in good condition. Yep, okay. Boy, there's... Everybody's chiming in. <laughs> well... I guess when you haven't had any sleep for like five days in a row for more than four hours uh it, your mind goes plays games with you and then they give you drugs for pain so my dad has not really been himself you can't have carry a conversation with him so it looks like he's able to carry a conversation today which would is first good news of the day ah from a nepal it's perfect to stream at this time. Uh, well, I, now, Paul, boy, that's that's by India, isn't it? That that's I'm thinking. Well, I gotta check that because that's your. Yeah, I didn't know you're from Nepal, so oh, I gotta do that over on this screen over here. Oh, we did a search in. Oh, my keyboard has just went straight. Oh, let me see if I can correct my keyboard because that is not good. Uh, Windows key and space. I don't know what buttons I'm doing to change the typing. Yeah, okay. Got my keyboard back. <laughs> you wouldn't believe how bad it is. So, and yes, it does below the Himalayas. So that's I, I love mountains. I do love mountains. Uh, I think they're very impressive. So you've got good scenery and plenty of things to take pictures of, but very good. Um, I hope I remember that next time when you stop by. So that, that's good. You were you usually find me at eleven o'clock or something like that. So okay, nine o'clock. That's good to know. This appreciate the help. Um. Here, it would be the starting, but what I'm seeing here, surely in the night, in a place in Moab, it, it, see, it should be not of Moab, it should be in Moab, is devastated and ruined, surely in the night, in another place in Moab. See, so this, they're not giving us any information. They're just saying, starting a conversation here, by trying to introduce it as a vision. Um, so they have gone up to the temple, big deal, high places to weep for Moab. Uh, you know, okay, their beard is cut off, big deal. Um, now our creator uh, asks you to, um, <laughs> ask you to, uh, be the way our creator created you. So 
not to trim the beard, not to trim the hair, or cut the hair or beard off. Um, uh, I've had to cut my hair once since I've been like 22. So, and your hair does stop growing. And I had a friend at work that when I told her that, she she got behind me and measured my hair by how many times she could grip the hair. And then about three years later, I'm just working at the desk and I have somebody grabbing my hair and I realize it's her measuring. And then she says, I guess I'm right. But she never knew that uh, split ends on hair actually tells your hair to stop growing. So... But my hair has been the same length for 40 some years now. And I had to cut it once, trim it. And I got plaster dust in it. And that stuff you can't even wash out. In the streets, they gird themselves. Cyclone, like, well, a big deal, square. See, this is a whaling dissolved in tears. So there's really putting words in, not according to English. And you'd think that the 1611 um, guys that were on purposely to put it into English would know the difference between of and in. <laughs> so, but they don't. They've got this uh, of meaning of Moab, men of Moab, not from Moab. I don't see this anything relevant to, to what's going on here. Okay, this 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 is this is not good. And I was kind of that's why I kind of highlighted that whole. What I'm trying to do is read these ahead of time, uh, probably within a day or two before doing them, and I've noticed started noting that um, like there's some weird stuff going on here that means nothing and so it looks like this whole chapter is going to be thrown out because surely the grass will with their big damn deal you know i mean if our creator is going to talk about uh, um, a famine or a no raining what is that a drought he will say it's a drought um therefore the abundance they have acquired stored up they carry off over the brook the oh yes it's so important how they cross the river um with their abundant stuff there this is no good either nothing here okay the water's full of blood big deal uh, 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 a lion? Yeah, when I read this and cut this, where the hell the word the lion? A lion upon the fugitives? I, you know, this is... Okay, so 15 went very quickly. All right, and yeah, my stream is lagging, and that's on Twitch. That's very unusual. Um, That's not good either. I got my new computer here. So let me see here, uh, but I really need that information. Thank you. Um, let's see here. I think also the problem is I didn't bring you back. That's bad. <laughs> That's bad. What did I, or, uh, I might have messed that up. Uh, that was way back here. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, voice stopping. Your stream is lagging and voice is stopping. That usually means my bit rate is too small or not enough. And so let me try to up that to... Oh, well, it's... Well, it is what they said I could stream at. And I'm doing only 30 frames a second, so. I hope that helps. It takes a little bit for it to catch up. But I added more bits to the stream that should help. 
because what is my bit rate? Yeah, my bit rate is almost showing from here. Okay, thank you. But see, when I usually put it up there, I get a warning from <laughs> uh, YouTube saying, uh, too much, slow it down. And then it actually shuts me down on YouTube. Even though YouTube, you're supposed to be able to twit or stream at like um, 10,000 KBs. But I appreciate the help. That, uh, that's oh, real good. Because I've been talking to a lot of people on Twitch, but they they haven't said that. That's why I was thinking that it was good. Um, but man, I'm all of this text you can see I've thrown out and I've explained it behind the scenes. I forgot to push that button. But all of this place, like, uh, why would it mean anything about all these people are going to worry and they're going to weep for Moab? And yet, you got to understand when our creator was politely saying they're unclean, they were having sex with each other, their children, uh, animals. That's why the text said that to clean them, clean or kill them all. Um, we do find those words about Amalek, but when it's mentioned one place, it means anybody that was unclean is really uh, cleaning off the land. Uh, go ahead and uh, ask any uh, question there. I'm willing to talk. Um, yeah. Uh, help you here. Um, a fire question, and I will uh, get right to it since you're here and you want me to talk. Uh, answer but yes I've, I've studied the text for more than uh, 30 years but I will also tell you our creator made me see him so I can mention anything about other some about other religions so um, I haven't really studied every one of them but I've looked into them um all these here, all this weeping, ascending, this, and, and just the cry of distress. What is the main purpose of being born? Okay. Um, think of it this way. When, if you take away all the universe, and because what they're saying, we started in one location and then we've been expanding as the universe. So at some point, if we go backwards, there had to begin this beginning of the universe. So what's before this? Well, we know that space is empty. Genesis, when I clean it up, it... it uh, the text tells us our creator hovered in his emptiness. Okay, now, then he separated himself, which means he created another dimension of time and space called heaven. And that's the white light that people see two days before they die or their body dies and their soul goes on. And... If our creator is, meaning no beginning, no ending, he just is, is, that's the best word I can explain, our creator. If I put it in relationship for trillion on top of trillion power to the trillions in mathematics, that's a long, that's a long time in our numbers. Well, I can say that he probably created beings like himself, okay? Just beings out there. Now, we can go to Jesus' text in, um, I think it's Luke, that he says that I was born before, or he, yeah, he existed before all the universe began. So, that's the beings that were there that our creator ex uh, made long time ago, um, 
I'm thinking, and this is my best guess, our memory has been wiped, we're being put on earth to make the decision that do we have a belief that our creator, a creator created everything, or he didn't create everything. And when you look around, everything is perfect. You can't find an error anywhere. Uh, we are the errors. We, we make the choice of being good or evil by the thoughts that they give us. Uh, when you say the Big Bang, um, do you understand that what they're talking about is the string theory of two one thousandths of a millimeter collided together to make all that we have in the universe. Now, if you actually took all the universe and made Earth like a tenth or no, a thousandth of a grain of sand, then you can say that the whole universe that we know of is actually something like, um, I think if they said it, in the United States it's called a city block, but to say a city block is um, maybe 300 yards, okay? That's, that's how big the universe is to this small as we are. So matter does not exist, size does not matter to our creator. Existence, he is, that's the point. We are always going to live forever because he made us in his image. But you have to understand that if these two strings cause that existence for a big bang, how come when we look into empty space and say that this matter that we know of, even if we put a time of uh, 16 billion years, and we know that it's just these small particles, and yet we look all over, we don't see another big bang going on anyplace else. That's the problem I got. It, it doesn't make reasonable sense that two others would have done the same thing different times. And, and you see how light travels that we would see even a speck if we look. If we look towards the North Star, that's where, on the other side of the North Star out there, that is where we know nothing exists. And you would think that for this big area that I'm talking about, uh, another two little thousandth of a, whatever they want to call it, they call them strings vibrating to create the nothingness. <laughs> but that doesn't make sense. It makes sense to me that our creator separated himself from this emptiness, create another dimension of time and space, and then sent part of himself back into make the universe. And the spewing of matter is, would mean that some are faster and some are slower. It, that's the only way that I can conceive or can think of how um, we have time and gravity by colliding matters of this uh, the spewing out of his existence. Because if you think about it, uh, if you've ever studied the sun, every sun has the same material in it, just a little bit more or less. But that means the starting blocks that we have here, completely opposite side of the universe, still has the same like uh, material to start with. And I know, or I'm pretty sure, that we aren't the only ones here, our creators, doing this cleaning up of his heaven, saying, look, I'm sick and tired after a few hundred trillion years that those that I've created don't believe who I am. So this is being done all over the universe to clean up the people that are the beings that want to always be against our creator. And then what's going to happen 
from what Jesus has told us that when Jesus is second coming on earth, that's the end of man on earth, then our creator is going to finally divide all the evil away from us by creating another universe or another time space dimension. And that's going to be called hell. And they are forever separated from our creator, which is a good idea. Uh, as you see, and if you see high moral people, um, that's good. And you know that everybody that's high moral uh, has tried to be good. So we all have this basic understanding of what means good. And then the better we become at good, the closer we become to our creator. Um, so this is a lot of the way of everything I know about because I've studied uh, at 18 years old. Um, my last year in high school, I got kicked out of a class, trigonometry, because I was smarter than everybody and I wouldn't partake with the teacher. Everybody else wasn't learning. And the teacher was having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with me for like a week in a row. And I told him, stop it. People aren't learning. Ask them. And he kicked me out. But the only thing is, is what did I do? I, I started going to the library across the street. And that library was the largest in our county. And I started reading any subject I wanted to read and study about. And it was like two years after I got out of school that uh, I finally read every book that I wanted to out of the library. So philosophy, um, astrophysics, philosophy, uh, what else? Um, any subject you can think of, I kind of read about. So I, I've dabbled in everything, art, literature, but... But um, it all comes down to one who is always trying to be as truthful as possible. We become closer to our creator. Now, in Christianity, um, we talk about going into heaven. And let me see here. Let me get some text here that... I can show you that's in the Bible. In Genesis 17, verse 6, this is talking about Abraham. Now, Abraham was uh, a descendant from Noah. And among the, the Noah gave uh, his eldest son the promise that all the blessings from our creator meaning if you are most obedient our creator will always help you out and um we always have burdens but the thing here is is not the burdens everyone else he gives for uh leaving our creator but it's uh, he's going to establish his covenant which to me means actually a promise and then he's going to keep adding promises and promises at this time, he's talking about kings shall be come forth from you, from his seed. So males, are these are going to become kings. Then later in this verse, I find in him who is a king, all the, not nations, but races on the earth will be blessed. Now, this is the very beginning of his promises. So, and this is just like this verse here, but we don't know what blessing, a blessed means until uh, King David is, um, okay, I got to open up the timeline here. Um, because all that promise from Abraham he has a son named Isaac, and then Isaac has twins, who one of them is Jacob, who becomes Israel. Israel is then um, going to Egypt, and then most people understand the story from there, that from Egypt, our creator led them out 
into where Israel is now the location of the promised land. But you, when you look at the years, we don't really have how many years, and I'm guessing there's this many years missing in the Bible's text. And then we go through all these years, and then we have this guy, okay? This is David. So I'm talking like maybe 600 years, 700 years from Abraham's time, do we now have another promise to David? And that promise is our creator tells him that, oh, I got a good one on the pyramid for you. Hang on here. And from that promise, David is told through his son's son seed, a king will be born and his kingdom will be in heaven. So this is the only verse that tells us why people will enter into heaven. And that is the blessed of all races. He's using the Israeli people at that time since uh, um, he made them a nation to be living as the example our creator wants you to live on earth. And then if you do, you can be forgiven of all your wrongs and enter into heaven from wherever. So that is how the promise for Christianity, how to get to heaven. Now, I know in Asia, monks meditate every day. And under the practice of this meditation of every day, and that's by waking up by uh, I think it's one o'clock in the morning or maybe even three o'clock in the morning they wake up. But after the, when they're meditating, they see just darkness. Um, and then all of a sudden they will, uh, after 10 years, they'll get a visitor and they'll see a being and be able to talk to the being. But after 25 years, it's an every night experience that they're meditating, that they're talking with those that have died off the earth. Their bodies have died and they're in this existence. And this is Asia's way of saying there's life after death, and they call that heaven. But... In the Bible, we learn this is like the place underneath the ground. Uh, there's a lot of netherworld or underworld uh, in the West that has that type of meaning. Um, but a long time ago, and this would be even before the flood, that they believed that they would ascend into heaven and become a star. So let me show you something here because I have a picture of Tibetan monks that I show. And this here, what they do on a certain night uh, once a year when they're meditating, they can let their soul out of their body. And this is what it's explaining. It rises up and it starts getting to the head and then they release it. So the Tibetan monk said, this is a way that we die to become a star in heaven. Okay. Now the practice here, you don't see a hole in his head, but up in the Tibetan mountains, they have these guys doing this practice, and you can see that a little, a literally, he kept it up on his head until it burst through and broke his bones, actually put a, put a hole through his skull. Now the Chinese Taoist put it through their forehead. So this is how they die, but they thought they were going to become stars in heaven. That's why the planets are named after gods. Um, and all the zodiac signs are all about that. Now, what happens to um, this meditation practice 
we can find that in in Malachi here. And it says that Judah, now this is the nation of Judah, married the daughter of a foreign god. Well, this daughter would be called a goddess. How do you marry this goddess? Well, you meditate to have se a sex with the so-called goddess. For a male and female, everything is the same experience except that you do not release your seed. Okay, but you're met, you're sitting and meditating when this image appears before you. This act that's why I call it a sex, like a sex. Uh, it's not the sharing of the bodies, but it is the experience, and this has repeatable paths of the body. Um, that's why you'll see all these guys here. Um, Here are telling you what's going on inside the body that this happens so that's what kundalini is about that's just them trying to say that we have a special practice um, that allows us to because once this happens to the body then they experience this uh, sex with the so-called female goddess so uh, just like a cobra strikes, that's how fast uh, this action of sex happens for them. Now, that's kind of what's going on with the practice that they've got. But they don't tell you. Now, I actually worked in an engineering facility, automotive engineering, so, and it was the largest in the world. Um... It was in Flint, Michigan, and literally they had like, uh, I think when I first started working there, there was like seven, no, 1,500 engineers from around the world, and then I made it like, uh, I think it was 28 years before they moved our building, but I worked with a lot of people from different countries, and I probably knew... 10 Hindus, or, yeah, Hindu, Hindu, they were Hindi, and they had a guru, and then when I was telling them about their sex practice, they went back and told the guru, and then they come back and told me, and his comment, he said, pretty much, I'm not supposed to be telling everybody, and I said, I told him, I said, so they're keeping you from actually becoming like them who are supposed to be the gods, and you're not going to have this reincarnation thing happen? I says, that's just tricking you people to feed them, give them money so they can keep doing their practice, but they don't want to share it with you. Uh, that's why monks and nuns are single, because once you have this experience, they don't want you to end up... Um, you you can't... You ha always have to be single to keep this sex practice up um, until you die. So that's what's going on. Now, on the Great Pyramid, now, I don't know how much you know about the Great Pyramid, but it's in a location on this whole earth that from the day that they made it, it has only shifted something like, um, I'm thinking 60 feet, 70 feet, and that's talking like over, I would say that this pyramid was made easily 60,000 years ago. And we know that by this, that um, you see the Sphinx picture where they carved off and put a male's face there. What it actually had was a lion's face. But that, the, the, the markings on that body show the raining the rain coming down causes this those little stripes that you see down the side of the body and they've estimated it that it would take eight, 60,000 to 80,000 years for that to happen so now that we know that that in the great pyramid was there and it hasn't shifted which in titanic plates 
I mean, we've got islands that are now moving three, 400 feet in our own lifetime. So to say that they found a place on this earth that did not move is very knowledgeable about the uh, shifting of the world, uh, the land. Now, think of this. How would you make something to tell people for the next 60, 80,000 years your knowledge? Well, if you look on the ground and say, this is the most stable ground and this is the beginning of our knowledge, and then we go to the four sides and we can say north, east, south, and west, and we can say in the south we can start with uh, winter, East is spring, and then summer, and then winter, and then we have, or fall, and then winter. We have the seasons and the knowledge of the four directions. Now, when we start taking that knowledge and start building it up, building up, building it up, they had actually put a curve into the lines going around, or the, it is not square at its base. The curve is actually like one fiftieth of the curvature of the Earth around the equator, uh, because we're kind of a little squashed, but the equator is the widest. But because of that curve, you cannot have a cap, a top. And that's what people are missing, because when you talk about knowledge, and this is the sum of the knowledge that we know of, then you have to say there's things unknown. So knowledge in, or knowing and not knowing is the complete knowledge that we have. So a lot of people don't understand that that is just telling us about how their knowledge and our knowledge is still the same. We still have this unknown knowledge that we still come come against in our lifetime, that nobody knows it all type of thing. Um, and it wasn't the Egyptians. In the Bible, they're calling it uh, a place called Sinar uh, that they found or re-found the, the city. Because if you look around the world, there are something like 300 pyramids uh, I think just in China, but when you find out these pyramids are covered with grass and forestry and have large trees on them, you know that took a long time to cover up the the surface of these pyramids. Now, uh, if you search the internet for the word megalith, megalith, yeah, megalith, megaliths show these great big stone structures that you can't explain um, explain what they how they did these. For example, in uh, the Great Pyramid under the under the stones, there are blocks of either granite or I think it's granite that are like 60 feet long, 30 feet high, 20 feet wide or something like this. We have no way today how to move that size. And here, this is kind of like underneath the Great Pyramid all the way around the sides. And yet when they checked the nearest quarry that has that granite is 500 miles away. So how did they move a rock that size? you start seeing there's a there's actually one of these things being cut out that is in I think um, Syria that shows this block that's still in the ground but it's got the shape and this thing is so large that the guy is standing on the end and he's only about this big and yet this thing is like this long we have no way to explain how they did this there's a rock out there that is so huge. It's like uh, two bus links long and wide and maybe two bus links high. And yet they have a center cut right straight out of it. And actually the other two pieces are sitting on a mound 
that this rock was like put up there then cut and they knew the balancing of the rock wouldn't fall apart because of how much they put the surface for the stand of this. I've seen pictures where perfectly cut squares are put into some uh, rocks that the corners are so sharp that how did they do cut that? I mean, it's just, they had a different technology back there, back then, and it's not known today. And, but megaliths are all over and they're hiding that knowledge from us as well. Um, but it just means that there was a time that our creator said enough of what's going on on this earth, I'm going to flood it, not flood it to where it covers the mountains. Um, there's two stories of the flood. One, that the waters rose up above the mountains, and that we know can't happen. But the other story is that it rained for a lot, constantly, for like 160, maybe 180 days. I can't remember the numbers. But that would cause a lot of flooding around the earth. So it was a flooding, like a wiping out of man. And you know how you take a, like clean off the table and you just wipe it and you leave some water there. That's the word that our creator uses in X, in uh, Genesis, that he wiped the earth. That's why when uh, people ask me, well, did everybody come from Adam and Eve? And I said, no. There have been many Adam and Eves. That's how we get different races. But the object is, is to have a story-like understanding of how every race would have started. You can relate that to Adam and Eve. So um, that's how I see the world. And it was just that our creator had said, I'm going to start over. And that was what he told Noah, that I'm going to flood it, and then it's going to happen. This is going to happen. So the whole world, ha that's why I know there's like in, like in Indonesia, there, what is that? There's, they found like a, a ruins of areas that had a population of a million people. Now, they haven't even known about this place that exists. A million people is a lot of people, so it had to be before the Great Flood. So this has been, that place got wiped out so bad that over the couple thousand years, it's been all covered up with growth. So I know that there's caves in Thailand, there's caves in Okay, now, yes, now this is the story of Noah. Our creator told him to make a boat. Now, the people get carried away when the text says he grabbed a male and female of every animal. It would have been every animal that was edible to our, per Adam and Eve. So this boat isn't huge, <laughs> but it had a, a bottom where the animals would have been caged, but not they wouldn't have had elephants, they wouldn't have had giraffes, but they would have had things like lamb, uh, goats, birds, deer. If you ever... I grew up with my grandfolks a few months of the year up on a lake that literally uh, you're the only people around for half a mile. So as I played, <laughs> I didn't have friends for those months of the year. But what I noticed was all the animals had like a society. My grandmother used to set me on the front porch when the deer would be eating in the front yard and they wouldn't move when I come out. I was that young that they didn't care. So I would sit there and eat breakfast, but I noticed that the rabbits, uh, chipmunks, birds, um, deer, they all hung together. 
And then I realized anything that doesn't or eats the grass actually has a warning system that they can live together, but if they see a predator, every one of them recognizes the other warning sign, like a chipmunk will sit there and make like a, a loud knocking sound, like you're knocking on wood, like that's how that a chipmunk does. Um, birds, they all fly up as one. Um, so they all have these other warnings that they all know to hide. There's predators been spotted. But these are the animals that could live together that I would understand that none of them are predators, that these animals were put together in Noah's boat, that he gathered them because he needed a food supply when he come off because he had um, three sons and they had three wives when they went into the boat. And then when they come out, they populated. So that's the story. Now, when you looked at that animation, that's the secular world guessing. They're not taking the text and actually understanding that the, uh, these guys that I tell you that meditate and have sex with the goddess that I showed you, that's who's editing the text. So the text you can't really trust until... You see what I've been finding here. When I'm finding all these formats, and some of these become stories, some of these become words from our creator, then you know that they started with this text to then corrupted it. But that's what's unique about what I'm doing right now because I'm going to take the three verse groupings and the four verse groupings I'll put them together and find out how many of them actually can continue the story and then I have to, then I can almost date them by the story of say like